Joining me is the panel, Parnell McGuinness, writer and director of communications agency Thoughtbreaker, and Simon Breeny, director of policy at the Institute of Public Affairs. Um, Parnell, it's like Newton's third law of motion, isn't it? For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Is the increase in the far-right demonstrations that we're seeing, and I think mostly in Melbourne, which coincidentally, not coincidentally, is the most left-wing capital of the country, is that explained in fact by, by the fact that this is a mirror of the kind of protest politics and extremism and disruption of the far left. Absolutely, absolutely. What we're seeing is the horseshoe of politics where you get the extreme left, the moon bats as I like to think of them, because I don't think left even really applies anymore, versus these sort of extremists on the right or nut jobs we might call them, having um, a fight. And it's really, it's bad for all of us because what you get is a politics so polarised into tribes that they can't listen to one another and improve their ideas anymore. It becomes very dangerous and what you end up with of course is a sensible centre, which I like to think that many of us here are. Um, Everyone no thinks longer, they're the sensible yeah. centre. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if, who no longer get to talk about ideas properly, who no longer get to um, explain what they mean and examine whether what, whether things have downsides and upsides. And I think there are a oh, lot of people out there at the moment so right. who feel like they've been silenced in these bigger debates and now these extremists are jumping in and saying that they represent them. And that's a danger for, but, but, for Australia. Look, on that point... Pole. Uh, on that point, have we seen exactly that with the debate? So called, it hasn't been a debate. It's been a shouting match about uh, global warming just this week. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is this is really interesting too. The the methods that you use for communication. So one of the things that Parnell's talking about is this polarisation, and that's certainly true. But right on the extreme ends, you've also got these people who just don't really participate in the debate at all. I mean, the the, the sort of tactics that you saw used at the Moreland Council meeting this week were exactly the sort of tactics that you see the left use right around the country. You know, they were using. Really? They were, they were using, you know, they, effectively they were using what's called the heckler's veto, which is this idea that you can stop someone else from speaking, from sharing their ideas by shouting over the top of them. So um, this is exactly what's going on. This is what the left have been doing now for many years. And no, they did through an Australian uh, Christian lobby um, exactly. meeting in, in Melbourne, I think it was, about two weeks ago. Exactly. That's not we're controversial, but this is. Yeah. I, find it, I find it weird. Um, Parnell, look, I don't know whether we're on the same boat on this one, but... In my opinion, and speaking as a non-Christian, I, I do believe that one of the civilising influence we have had has been Christianity. It tells you to turn the other cheek, treat others as you would have them treat you. Um, but there's been a survey just out. The Ipsos polling firm surveyed more than 17,000 people across 23 countries and asked the question, does religion do more harm in the world than good? Now, most countries, 50-50, but Australians... 63%, two thirds, thought That's religion we're an increasingly did harm. Sorry. Yeah. Well, the, the two thirds say religion does more harm than good. Does that surprise you? Uh, it doesn't, because of the religion that's so visible at the moment. I think Australia is becoming increasingly secular, and so when you ask a question like that, Australians think about what the most visible religion is, because they're not living it day to day in their everyday lives. Sure, their kids might go to Catholic schools, but they don't really consider themselves fully blown Catholics in the way that we might have been 20 or even 40 years ago. So um, the most visible religion in the world is currently doing more harm than good. You have to agree with that statement. I think that's probably well, the way don't. Australians have taken it. Well, I think there's been a lot of publicity about what harm they did 30 years ago, but they don't look at what good they're doing now, as in I, I'm not hospitals sure and civilised. Which the most visible religion is here, Andrew? Oh. I think that's a <laughs> cross purposes. Whoops. Uh, yes, I see what you mean. Islam. I'm still talking about the tax on Christianity. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. How dull of me. But here's an example of new hatred. Uh, particularly of Christianity, I'll leave Islam. And Oxford College has suspended Christian Union from holding, recruiting, new, you know, little stand freshers week, recruit new students, said, listen, you can't have that because you're, you'll be alienating students from other religions. This is a microaggression because traditionally Christianity has been used as an excuse for homophobia, 
and certain forms of neo-colonialism. Can you tell me why Christianity's got such a bad name? Yeah, it's a fascinating phenomenon, this idea that Christianity, you know, all, all the bad things that you can possibly identify that might tangentially be associated with Christianity are the only thing that people focus on, particularly when you're talking about people on the left, when it comes to talking about this particular religion. But when you talk about other religions, Islam's a great example of this, all of those things are forgiven. You know, everything that you can associate with Islam that's obviously terrible, the violence that might be associated with that religion, is something that you uh, are to ignore. And, um, you know, all of, all of the good stuff that comes out of a religion like that you can talk about and celebrate. But there's none of that sort of level of forgiveness. There's nothing, there, there's nothing to say... It's pitiless. It it's merciless that you're allowed to engage in that sort of analysis. And I, I, think, I think it's utterly perplexing, um, particularly given where Christianity has taken us, um, not, not only Australia, but Western countries, I think, generally, um, the sort of um, ideas that have come out of Christianity, the abolition of slavery, for instance, has its genesis, genesis in, in Christian theological teaching. I agree. Um, so I, I, find it, I find it fascinating, but it's, it's so sad. I mean, at the end of the day, this, this college decided that they would allow for a multi-faith stall to provided it wasn't manned yeah yeah and <laughs> and you know i mean this sort of idea that you know you have a multi-faith stall and and that if you don't have something like that you 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 i don't being get a, it you, you you you've been too offensive to to people who might be of a different religion i just find panel does this any any of this worry you yeah for sure um what look the 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 issue really at the hand here is that the christianity is being rejected as a religion because it is standing in as a proxy again for other religions which we might be less comfortable with. So it's easier to reject the most, uh, the religion which, which we know, which our parents might have practiced, than it is to say that there is a problem with other religions. So I think that what's happening is this sort of displacement that there that Christianity is feeling the brunt of what people might be wanting to be concerned about uh, in look, another religion. I, 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 look, I think you're actually putting a real finger on this that uh, I should mention to my um, clerical friends. I don't know that they're advertising their good works at all, really. Uh, I mean, they're making political stands, but I think you're absolutely right. It's, there's a blindness, there's an accept, you know, blind acceptance of... But let's, let me move on to uh, quickly, because I need to get this crack in. Um, we're moving one creed that's coming back into favour is communism, obviously, among the Greens. Now, it's, I know that sounds like McCarthyist, but here is the Greens leader Richard Di Natale on the ABC just this week, explaining how he would fix high gas prices, for instance. Have a listen to this. We've got a market that is a mess. It's failing. Uh, we've got successive governments that have failed to oversee the transition away from fossil fuels to a jobs-rich, renewable energy future, more solar, more wind, battery technology. That is what the future looks like. So governments absolutely need to step in. They can regulate prices. All you need to do is regulate prices without thinking what that then entails down the line. Regulating prices didn't work for Stalin, it didn't work for Mayo. Why would it work for Richard Di Natale? This is such a clever political strategy by people like Richard Di Natale and the Greens because um, he talks now in 2017 about the energy market in Australia being a mess. Well, it's true, the energy market is a complete mess, but the reason it's a mess is because of government intervention in the first place. So the sort of policies that have been put up now over many, many years by people like Richard Di Natale have caused the problems that we see now in the energy market, have caused high prices, so and now he wants to put a cap on those prices. He wants for more government intervention to add on top of government intervention that's already in place that's caused Once these you issues. regulate prices, you regulate markets, you regulate what people produce, how they produce it, well, eventually you're... The next step is nationalisation. I mean, exactly that, right. That, that is just around the corner. I this promise you that will be proposed in the next five red, years. Red, green over red. Simon Brini and Parnell McGuinness, I'm sorry for run way at a time. David Spears is going to be yelling at me because he is next, followed by Paul Murray. But from me, I'd better get out of here in a hurry. Good night.